Let's talk about tires again, specifically the Mita's EU7 Plus Dark Car Yellow. What's up my micro friends? Welcome back to another video. Time for another tire talk, this time about the Mita's EO7 Plus Dakar Yellow version. Now, if you've seen the channel before, you might have seen the video on the Mita's that I did when I had my 1290 Super Adventure S. Now, this time I was looking for a tire for a two week trip that included a good portion of off road tracks. And my choice fell again on the Mita's tire. This time, though, I chose the Dakar version over the normal version. Now in this video I'm going to talk to you about the experience that I had for the specific use that I had for the tire. There's a lot of good stuff, there's some bad stuff too, so uh, stay tuned. So a quick introduction to the difference between the Mita's tires, it takes a while to get your head around it. Now there are several versions of the Mita's EO7 tire. The Mita sells them as a 60-40 tire, 60 road, 40 off-road. I'll probably put them in the 50-50 section with some of the other ones that are out there like the uh, Anarchy Wild, the Caro 3, probably the Key 60 uh, Scout. It's sort of in the same range, more or less. Now, uh, there are different versions of the EO7. There is a version that is uh, geared more towards dual sport bikes. Uh, that's the EO7 without the Plus. The Plus has bigger sort of tread pattern or bigger blocks uh, for the heavier adventure bikes. And then there's a distinction between the non-Dakar and the Dakar version. Now, the Dakar version comes with an even stiffer carcass and a, uh, a harder rubber compound. There's two things why that makes sense. It's more puncture resistance and hopefully a longer lasting tread. Now the puncture resistance are very important when we get to that later in the video because we had quite an incident when it comes to the importance of puncture resistance. So stay tuned for that. Now my choice fell on the EO7 again. Uh, I was looking at other tires. I really wanted to try something different for a change. But I was looking for a tire that would last me for a two week trip, a total of six and a half thousand kilometers, and that really limits the choice that you have. Now, the first week we were riding the ACT Italy, that's five days of off road, on road riding, a good portion of off road riding. So that's why I was looking for a tire that could do that too. But there's still a lot of road riding uh, just for me getting down south to Italy for once on the Autobahn. But also in between the off-road tracks, there's a lot of tracks on road. And then I was planning to ride some of the on-road tracks in Sardinia and now Corsica, where I am right now. So I needed a tire that could do both. And of course, it's always a compromise. You're not going to get the best of two worlds necessarily combined into a single tire, but you will get a good compromise. Now, some of the other tires are mentioned, the Caro 3 or 4 now, but the newest version that's out there, the Anarchy Wild and the K60 Ranger would have been nice. They're set to not last longer than 4,000, 5,000 kilometers. So they're basically out of the range for me because I needed something that goes at least 6,000, 7,000 kilometers. Because the last thing I want to do is change a tire while I'm on tour. It's not the end of the world, but it just takes extra organization and it just costs time. So if I can just mount a tire and I have no problem mounting a fresh set of tires before I go on tour, but then I just don't want to deal with it uh, while I'm on tour. So that's why I'm... Uh, Going back to the meters because I've had the experience that it would last that long, the normal non Dakar version. So I could be sure that I don't have to deal with tire changes. Now there's a few, uh, <laughs> there's a few issues with the tire. It's not completely unproblematic. It starts with mounting the tire. This time I actually mounted the tires myself. I wanted to try it and of course I picked the worst tire you can possibly pick to mount yourself because even if you have professional equipment and some of the guys that install tires for you will say these are a real pain to install because of the stiff carcass um, they're really hard to get onto the rim and uh, that's the experience I, I've had myself it was quite a workout I thought about making a video about it good thing I didn't because I was struggling uh, just getting that damn tire out there and of course I did it the first time that doesn't help we do something the first time that usually takes longer anyway the second issue that this tire has that i've experienced here too is that i don't know if it's due to the harder carcass or what the reason is for that but the tires they do lose air now they lost air on the 1290 super adventure s but you know over a span of a week it would be like 0 0.1 0 0.2 bars that's something i can live with 
um, and just refill the tire every week. But this particular tire, especially the front tire, is losing a lot of air. Um, so I'm losing about 0.1 to 0.2 bars of pressure every day. That's a little too much. Now, maybe I mounted it wrong or whatever the deal is, but I've I've read comments that I'm not the only one. Also, the experience that uh, Jochen had with his Mita's tire is losing air. So that seems to be an issue on some of the tires. Now, so much for the negative part. Now, the positive part is I was a bit concerned about the harder rubber compound as compared to, let's say, the Anarchy Wild, especially in the wet, rocky sections of the ACT Italy trip. I mean, there's a reason why some of these tires are mixed with softer rubber compound. Um, they should give you more grip in wet conditions where you're on rock. But just going through the ACT track, we had a lot of wet uh, terrain, a lot of uh, rainy tracks. No, I didn't see a big difference to what my friends were experiencing, just to seeing how the rear tire was spinning and, and slipping away. So I didn't feel like I had that much of a disadvantage, really. Now, I don't have the direct comparison on this particular bike, but I didn't feel like it was that limiting. So that concern, I don't have really. The other one was grip on pavement and road. And after riding in Italy, specifically in Sardinia, now here in Corsica, the tire has an amazing amount of grip on uh, dry tarmac. Now, of course, you can't lean it as much as a pure sports or sports touring tire. And, uh, you know, if you start to lean the bike, you get to a point where, you know, kind of feel it's enough. You could probably go a bit further, but you can see it's, it's getting a bit wobbly uh, as you lean the bike. Uh, so you won't be scraping any foot pegs or uh, scraping any knees, which you won't be doing anywhere with this bike. But it's good enough that it's still fun to ride roads like, wow, check out the view. That is so cool. Get a nice view of the coastline from here. I'm on the west coast of Corsica and oh, there's other bikes. I haven't seen that many motorcycles yet. So I'm happy with the on-road performance and the off-road performance. Uh, most of the stuff was sort of gravel. Um, we had a muddy section in there that was pretty bad, but it didn't really matter what tire we had in the muddy section. So we were all struggling. <laughs> the mud was so sticky and by the, you know, it sets the, the tire completely uh, full of mud and there's no way you can handle the bike. It's like riding on, on soap, basically. So we were struggling with that section and they came with a bit of surprise that we had all that mud all of a sudden. Uh, you couldn't really see it. I just took a turn and all of a sudden there it was. So anyway, that kind of stuff, uh, none of these tires performed. Um, and that's fine. So down to the longevity part, I'm close to 4,000 kilometers on this tire now. It still looks pretty good. I checked it this morning. Also a quick update on the tires. This is what they look like at 37. 100 kilometers you can see there's been a lot of cornering <laughs> in sardinia and corsica it really does show after a while um also breaking hard into the turns will wear this tire but it still looks good um it still looks like it's gonna get me home and for most of uh, the trip the off-road sections are done there's a little bit of that today and then that's it Have a quick look at the rear tire so uh that's the rear tire after 3,700 kilometers. So you can see there's definitely wear on the sides as well, but also in the middle. Um, I have a small section of off-road left for today, and the rest is gonna be on paved roads. So I have no concerns of finishing my tour and going back to Berlin with this set of tires. Now, one of the most important things is the puncture resistance. Now, I I didn't think it was that important until we had the first incidents on the ACT Italy track. It was on day number five, the last day, and it was not even a difficult section. It was like easy to medium gravel section. And as for most part of the tour, I was uh, riding in front and all of a sudden my friends were missing. I just turned around and no one was there and I was wondering what happened. Yeah, you always uh, you know expect the worst which we've had happen uh, we had someone crash and basically drop out of the tour on day one so of course you get concerned really quickly what happened so i turned around uh went back and it turned out that there was a piece of rock that got stuck and punctured jochen's rear tire so he was running the michelin anarchy wild tire and that piece of rock was like a triangular shaped piece of rock, looked like a shark 
too thin on one of these ancient uh, <laughs> truck teeth. And it's not just a puncture, it's just a complete tear, about an inch, two and a half centimeters wide uh, rip into the carcass of the tire. Now that's stuff that shouldn't happen. I, I don't know how likely this is to happen. I haven't been riding off road that much, but that's really annoying because, you know, small puncture from a nail or something, that's an easy fix. We all had tire repair kits for these tubeless tires and uh, they're really easy to fix but if you got a big gap like this in the carcass uh, i didn't think we were able to fix it somehow miraculously we were able to use three of the plugs that we had in that um, tire puncture kit and used all the glue in there and just kind of smeared it up with glue and it held two bars of pressure all the way to the tire shop and that was about 10 kilometers away from where we were we were in the middle of the mountains had to get the bike off the mountain first so we were lucky that we were able to fix it and but this got me wondering the puncture resistance that's a real issue and it's hard to say if in the same scenario the meters tire would have held up or not but i know it's one of the stiffest carcasses you can get out there so that's another big plus uh, for the meters tires uh, there's a good chance that in the same scenario the meters tire would have held up so it's hard to say it's a bit of an insurance policy so for the downside of the difficulty of mounting it if you have it done by a professional it's not really one of your concern obviously you can mount the tire their air pressure loss that's that's a bit of a pain really so in conclusion i'm really happy with the tire choice for a 16 day trip so just over two weeks and about six and a half thousand kilometers this tire held up good so far and it looks like it's gonna get me home the puncture resistance is great the riding performance I'm quite happy with. So even with the harder rubber compound, it worked well off-road, well enough for me even for the tracks we were going. And it was fine on paved tracks as well. It's still a lot of fun to ride. It strikes a good compromise between the performance of off-road, on-road, longevity of a tire. I liked it so much that I just ordered a new set of tires when I'm bringing the bike home. It goes to service. Uh, it needs the 15,000 kilometer service and already emailed the guys to order a new set of tires for this bike until I have better options. I want to try different tire options sometime down the road, but it has to be a shorter trip so that I don't run out of tire uh, during the trip. Anyway, guys, if you like the video, give me a thumbs up, comments, questions, put them in the comment section, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Until then, ride safe, stay awesome.